Good afternoon, lovely people. Um, today we have someone very special with us from South Africa at our piece of the puzzle series with Yes Exclusive Flowers. We have Jill Menton here from Johannesburg, um, who we are very happy. But I see it's very chilly in Johannesburg out there, so I hope you're keeping warm and nice. But thank you so much for making time to, um, to be live with us. My pleasure. So good to see you Thank guys, you. and hello to everyone out there who might be joining in. Uh, yes, yeah, wonderful. We are very happy to have you there. And most people in the world don't think that uh, it can be cold in Africa, but uh, as we all know, it can be very much. We have today a little bit of sun, but two days ago it was also very, very chilly. Yeah, yeah. Um, Jill, wonderful having you actually on our chat. And before we come into detail, um, like, tell us a little bit about your journey, how you became what you are actually today, how you, how you started uh, with, with floristry, how you became into, like, got into flowers. Okay, so my story is quite a unique one because I actually studied advertising. Um, I was a, I qualified as a copywriter and I was working in ad agencies in Cape Town. And then came up to Joburg and I was working in an agency here in Joburg and realized that that part of my soul was really empty. And I did as many people do, do at that point when they feel that they're not happy. I decided to have a career change and to go and search mm -hmm. for something to do with my life that would fill up my soul. And all I knew is that I wanted whatever it was that I was doing to touch the lives of other people at the same time. And... Long story short, but I, I had booked a ticket to go to the to the UK to go, you know, my the, the land of dreams at that time. It was about 20 years ago now. Um, I thought I would find it there. And quite miraculously, I had a very powerful spiritual experience in the Natal Midlands when I was on a walk. And I had a very um, amazing interlude with a little wild flower. And I was told by God, I believe. I know we all have different faiths and deities, but that I was going to use flowers as a medium to help people communicate their feelings better to themselves and one another. And that started my journey into flowers. So I actually started my life in flowers by developing a concept that I do today called Flowerscape, which is using flowers as a medium for people to get a reflection of what's currently happening in their soul and physical and emotional body. And so that's how it began. I ended up going to the UK that the, about five days after I had this experience with this little flower. And I was very beautifully led on a journey where I found uh, Judith Blacklock. I studied with her part time, trying to learn about floristry and flowers. And I, yeah, I spent two years developing my first brand, which was, which is called Flowerscape. And then, um, I was ready. It took me two years. I'd worked out how these workshops and processes were going to run. I'd learned a few flower names and <laughs> quite a few. And I came back to South Africa and that was in 2003. And I started, uh, I did my first flowerscape workshop with a group of my friends and friends of friends. And I invited one of the editors of the Top Billing magazine to come along to experience this new concept of mine, which they loved. And Top billing, top billing put me on their, their show and that's how it started. So I, I, um, I realized very quickly that that part of life was very uh, esoteric. It was a little bit hard mm -hmm. to make money. So at the same time, when I was building the brand called Flowerscape, I had this dream of owning my own flower shop one day and I'd it felt as if a little butterfly had sat on the seat of my soul and it was like electric. And I thought, oh, I'm going to have a flower shop one day and I'm going to call it electric butterfly. And then uh, <laughs> that dream came true and I started a flower shop or a flor floristry business with a dear friend of mine and she still has the business. And we did that together for almost nine years, I think. And and then my non-Greek soul couldn't sit in a shop anymore. So I decided to leave to pursue my dream of sharing my passion for flowers with people in a teaching environment, um, inspiring them and to really get back into the healing side of flowers in my life. So that's been my 
my very long 21 year journey in the business of flowers. Wow, 21 years in 21 seconds. Uh, that is, I, I, I actually really uh, appreciate that. <laughs> I could not do that. <laughs> so, so glad. I'm always yeah. talking too too long about things. It's uh, it's wonderful actually to to hear um, how inspirational this is. Um, that you started with a little flower and with a little butterfly, and all this comes to life in a in a in a like very nice way and um and how i i remember actually uh just when you talked uh, i remember the first time i got to meet you on the phone i was uh, at the airport picking up some flowers and you called me about being interested in in flowers and whatsoever it sounded like and uh, yeah so 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 that that came to mind just right now when you were talking about it and you talked about also like a bit about classes so for who are these classes and and what are you teaching okay so the classes are for beginners and or intermediates or advanced level. I literally just teach my style and my love and approach to floristry. So I teach the basic principles and elements of design that I learned. And then we add some rule breaking stuff and some out the box things. But generally I'm teaching the fundamental basics of what it takes to run a, a business in flowers and all about flowers and how to care for them how to manage your buying. I do a lovely business course with my business students who are entrepreneurial and want to have me as a mentor. I teach the how to do a wedding. So I teach bridal bouquets, buttonholes, the usual table centerpieces. Um, I like to teach occasion floristry. So in my beginner, intermediate and advanced course, I, I like to try and teach people how to do all different kinds of styles of design. You know, I don't have a set style. I like to be able to teach people how to do mm minimal country, cottage, classic. Uh, and then my most important thing about how I teach is to allow people to be who they are in flowers. Um, because I think that it's such a soul work and it's such a difficult place to be in because it's people critique you a lot and you have to have a strength from which you can create from that's quite solid and quite resistant. So I like to teach all kinds of approaches to making an arrangement or creating an arrangement and how to think out the box. I, yeah, I think that's the thing. It's, it's just about being unique and being true to what it is that you want to create and not to, to help people come out of that block that a lot of people have with trusting who they are and trusting how they can approach a design and allowing that beautiful creative spirit that's in them to evolve with them. Um, and I think that's what I love the most about the style that I, the way that I teach and yeah. It seems like it's not just you teaching like floristry, you're also teaching somehow um, for people um, like mentally being strong and being confident, isn't it? That's exactly it, yeah. And I think that's why I keep my class being in so, myself. so small. <laughs> Um, because I, I love, I love to watch people, um, change and find a way to connect with themselves. And I think flowers are such a brilliant tool for that to happen naturally anyway. I mean, you guys know when you work with flowers, there's this return back to source, return back to yourself. And I always say to my students, just let the flowers lead you. Try not to lead them, you know, to you get out of your ego and you start creating from your soul center or your creative self. It's a very different place. Mm. Yeah, and then yeah, and I think this is, I personally think this is when you use the word design, actually, this is a very powerful word. But I think like if people like are, are mentally strong enough to call themselves a designer, they will the inside out like they will showcase whatever they have inside whatever they feel and however they feel about flowers and 
yeah. textures yeah. and I mean yeah. obviously like creating something for clients like this yeah. is what they are and that's why also every designer like is different mm -hmm. like it's not only in, in in floral design it's the same with fashion um or, or like in, in any other um industry it is when you are yourself yeah. you don't need to be afraid that anyone is copying you because there will be yeah. no one ever in the world who will create the same things with the same material mm. as you will do it when you get it into your hands because it's in your mind it is in your soul it is something yeah. that you are going to create others um, and i think this is actually very very like a very powerful message also also for our south african specifically south african but also maybe african um florist who who are out there who, who just also need the push to say you know what you are not just a florist you are a floral designer and you can go out there if you are I mean, if you want this, if this is your passion, if this is your calling, and as you said, I mean, you come from from marketing, media uh, side, from from an agency yeah. side, maybe even. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it, it's not, it, it's something is is within you that you need to bring outside that other people can appreciate. Exactly. Yeah, that's that's absolutely it. So it's a very holistic uh, platform that I offer, and I I think that's what makes me a little different. Um, and I know my, my students, somebody said to me the other day, you know what you are, Jules, you're a maverick. I said, what? No, you're a maverick. <laughs> I said, okay, maverick sounds good. It sounds a little gangster, but it sounds good. <laughs> Flower gangster. <laughs> yeah. Flower gangster, that sounds good. <laughs> no, I think this is exactly what you say. And, and I very often hear that people asking, like, they are afraid to, to go out and tell this is my design. Um, and, and I think people should not be afraid because um, you, you can maybe learn different techniques, but you always have own, like, it's your design and you should not be afraid because there's no right and no wrong this is your design this is you you know and, um, yeah. and as i said you can maybe use different techniques you can learn something additionally but how you execute these techniques um this is by the end of the day gonna be your style and i think yeah. What I have seen so far also, um, you take people, you walk them through from the very begin to the end. When when I saw one of your videos, I, I and I mean, I learned that um, you have to start really from the begin to tell people because we sometimes uh, make the mistake to think like people they know about this already you know and i also learned that a lot of people and i'm not blaming them but it's just in our mind that we sometimes think that need to, to be known yeah it's good that we actually or you start from the scratch from the begin to say okay this is like your container these are your flowers to treat them like that you need to cut them like that and so on and so forth because when we started with the flowers we had our own little, um, let's say, um, journey with, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> with them, with the florist. We we did not tell them how to treat, for example, garden roses, and it it went totally wrong because they didn't know, and we didn't know that they don't know. So that's why the roses were not treated well. And I think that was also my lesson to say, okay. Yeah. Uh, we have to to learn people from the beginning to the end and i think this is what what i see what you do and i appreciate this very much uh you, you know what it you is are, um, you hmm? know what it is sylvia i think that my purpose in the position that i'm in as a tv florist as someone that's somehow got to this profile of being um seen as as the go-to person or someone to talk to is that my whole passion and purpose is for the industry of flowers. My whole, my whole reason that I, I am Jill Manson and that I live and breathe and sleep and eat flowers and do my videos and do the TV is because I want, I want people, whether they enthusiasts or just people who don't even know that have never experienced flowers before. I think I'm, I'm, I'm like the florist for the people. Because 
I, I inspire people to just look at a flower or pick it up or try something. And to me, this is so important for not just our industry, not just for the high-end floral designers, the top competitors, um, the award winners, our, you know, the, the general florist on the corner, just for all of us. It's so important that people remember the importance and the beauty and the gift of what flowers are, especially yeah. mm -hmm. to yeah. us now in our lives and coming out of this COVIDness and this call back to nature and to respect nature and to love nature. And I think that that's why I have been blessed with so many opportunities is because I really know what my passion and my purpose is. And it's not, it never has been to be the best or the top or the most revered. It's really just been to be the voice for, for, for flowers. And I think to allow people to connect with this beautiful natural elements and nature elements that we have, that's so good for the soul. That's yes. amazing. And I think like you, you also, um, you just said uh, when we come out of this, and I think because we all have experienced right now something that we haven't had flowers around us for almost two months, which it has never ever happened in this world anywhere else, uh, uh, even not during the COVID. There were uh, most of the countries had access to flowers, um, not not a lot, but they had access. But here we have been locked really uh, um, like out of flowers. And I think uh, you also did something um, what uh, what helped you over the time and maybe also the people uh, that watching you all the time you um you got um some of these flowers you, you rescued actually them uh, from uh, from uh, being um, um Thrown away. Um, thrown away yes thank you uh and and you did little videos uh for the time of the first time of the COVID. so tell us a little bit about that okay cool so i thought to myself right i'm going into lockdown i'm not going to have flowers for however many weeks remember we thought it was going to be 21 days and that was like oh my god i'm gonna die yes, exactly, exactly and yeah. then i thought to myself hang on a second i wonder what's happening down at multiflora and I, I i thought let me just go and take a look and i went down there and i said guys you know what's happening nope uh whatever we don't sell do we gonna have to throw away and i said no 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 give give me the stuff let me take these flowers home i fill my car to the brim um, I went home, <laughs> I ordered myself um, one of those little home vlogging kits with a microphone and a, a tripod for my mm -hmm. iPhone. And I decided that I would create 21 videos of a mix of speaking about flowers and their healing essence and their myths. And so the story of flowers in a, in a healing and a flower language way. And then I would do some DIYs. And it was so hard because when I'm on TV, I've got like two camera guys and I've got a director and they've got the lights. And this time it was me <laughs> running to my phone, pushing start, running back to my station and then realizing I'm out of shot, running back, <laughs> running back. But I got better and better at it. And so what I did was I, I, I filmed about four videos a day for the first five days, which made 21 videos. And then my flowers was finished because they were they were ones that were going to be thrown away anyway. But I managed to get about 20, actually I got 18 videos done in the time that the flowers lasted. And then I just wow. released one a day. I did my own editing. It was incredible. I couldn't believe it. I was like, wow, it was hard and it took very, very long. But sure, it was so well received and I'm so happy that I did it. And it was amazing. I I, I got tired and then I... I had a big sort of language lesson that happened. I went to get a vase with my hand and um, I was tired because I'd filmed so long and I reached up to grab it and I, it dropped it and I tried to catch it and my hand went through the glass and I sliced my finger. Ooh. And that was the end of filming. <gasps> but it was good because it was also time for me to just spend some time being quiet. I think COVID forced a lot of us mm. to go into some reflection mm. about who we are and what we're doing here and where we're going to go next. So yeah, it was a, I was a, a forced stop, but at least I got them out. Yeah, yeah, I think I think what you were saying, and I think I, I I don't even consider it brave. I just consider it really like authentic and honest. Um, to also talk about this that you say like you know, I've been tired, 
like I've been tired also doing something for other people. Mm-hmm. We just touched on it like like slightly before. I think everyone in our industry, whether it, it's it's in the the weddings or the flowers industry, we are always people who serve other people with whatever we are doing, whether we're doing events, weddings, or flowers for other people. And we usually have a 24-7 job in a way. You know? So we never take time specifically as entrepreneurs for ourselves. Yeah. So this time right now that came where like, everything was basically, I mean, on pause button, you go out of the house, you can't even like do anything. Like it, it's, a, it's a huge break for us, for people who are used to a lot of busyness, like, I mean, I don't want to say that being busy is always productive, but we were always busy, you know? So, and I think that is like a, a real shock for, for for an entrepreneur's body to just like be muted and say, you know what, just like sit down, like and don't do, do anything <laughs> and, and, and just like watch it go. And I think you feel guilty. I, I mean, like at the beginning. We, we felt guilty that we had no duty anymore, that we, we, we actually had to bake and to cook and that was all what we could do, you know? Yeah, no, it was, a, it was a birthing. It was like a birthing. It was really hard and it was filled with so many lessons um, of actually receiving and listening and not mm-hmm. forcing the doing rather than listen to what the universe is calling for you and, and follow that lead. And I think, you know, coming, as you guys know, and I'm sure some of the people watching might not know, I stopped being a day-to-day florist uh, nine years ago. I I was not doing deliveries around for birthdays or get well soon or sympathy. And I've, I've gone back to it. And it's been incredible. And it's been so soothing and so simple. And I almost feel as if sort of God had said, you know, Jill, just do the easy route for a while. Just, just do the easy route for a while. Just take it easy, you know. And hmm. it's a, it's such a big thing to just sometimes do a little less so that you have more. So the, it was the, it was quite a, quite a big uh, realization for me. So yeah, I think that's true. What you were saying, Alfie. You know, we we keep ourselves so busy and we drive, 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 drive. And the body says, no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I think maybe I want to also give you the time right now to speak about your newest project. I just briefly like read on it also online um, with your meditation and flower combination. And yes. maybe that is some like right now, maybe like something that people need. Um, and, and just okay. tell people a bit more about it. Okay. So... What I did was I developed, uh, well, I put online what I do in a one-on-one capacity with people or groups. So what, I have my first one on Saturday. And so the delegates are all arriving. I've given them a a list of natural elements that they have to find. So they have to instinctively or intuitively be guided to a stone or, you know, like sometimes you're walking on a morning walk and you you see a beautiful dried wood and you think, that's beautiful. And you take it and... So they've been they've been in the process of collecting a mixture of plants, herbs, uh, stones, dried materials, whatever it is they feel that are, are going to be good for them to have in the process. And I'm going to lead them on a journey with their natural ele- elements and a meditation to be able to allow them to receive a unique message for their life from the natural world and from these beautiful elements of nature. So it sounds a little hey wow, but it's a very powerful thing when you actually look to a, a, a flower or a, a stone or any element of Mother Nature and allow yourself to see a reflection of what's currently happening in your life. And that coming together of yourself with the spirit of nature is a very powerful place and it's very, very good to sometimes just check in with who you are at the moment or where you are. And just to remember that there is a very big and very beautiful, powerful force that we can connect to, infinite intelligence of nature that is a wonderful guide and can keep people truly aligned with their purpose and or allow them to help find even what's going on, you know. So that's what I'm going to be doing. It's my new project. I'm doing it online like this. So that's going to be a little challenge in my first one, but I'm very excited. I'm about to do a dry run on it and 
I think people are just so excited that they finish getting their elements together on their morning walks, even from their garden or from the local sort of supermarket or flowers or whatever. And yeah, so that's that's very, very exciting for me because I think that's what the world needs now is to, mm. to reflect and to just see and know that they are loved and seen as an integral part of, of this planet and yeah, that we're all connected and it's wonderful. But where can people actually book that when, when they listen now and they want to book something sure. like that? So how they can book it? Yes, you can. You can just either just email me directly for now. I haven't put it on the website yet, so it's not live on the site. But if you email me at info, that's I-N-F-O, info at jillmanson.co.za, um, that's where you can get some information or just give me a ring if you like. My, my telephone number is on my website um, and I mm -hmm. can just chat to you a bit about it and send you the details. That's yes. cool. Great. I think, I mean, to be quite honest, we also, we know a lot of people that in the industry, but also not only in the industry, that have a quite difficult time, you know, right now. So they are not in the right mental space, yeah. I would maybe call it, um, just because there are so many uncertainties, so many difficulties. And I mean, we might even for the flower industry say slowly, maybe also from the first of June, things are going to get somehow better in a way, but not great. But at least we are able to move things around um, for private home occasions or whatever we can do, birthdays, baby showers, whatever they will be, which cannot be postponed. Um, but um, but for events, um, still there's a huge uncertainty, there's huge economic difficulties, financial stress, um, and then emotional stress for, for a lot of people. And I think um, like to look into yourself and to somehow um yeah being able even sometimes just to reach out and to connect to someone else to just see if that if you're not alone or that you're not alone you know i think help me would help already a lot of people um out yeah. there and i even think like i read yesterday a comment from a, a florist and she said something it, it let me think uh, quite a lot um she she had to comment on something that she said she's not be able yet to start again and and people maybe didn't understood what she said and she said uh, uh, I, I, I I ask you to understand I'm not ready yet to go out and start working again and I thought um, like everyone so normally thinking so keen to start working but there's people out there maybe they have so much they have been maybe so much in shock that they are still not ready to just carry on and just go go out and start like all of the and everyone deals with this yeah. differently i yeah. think i mean we, we are just lucky in a way but i think it's it's just everyone deals with this in a different yeah. way and i think that's a great initiative what what you have done to come mm -hmm. to the people to the inner side of the people yeah with, with you know what it is that we were chatting at a, uh, have some business students that are doing a course with me at the moment and we were talking about this exact thing and what it is it's it's inertia so inertia is when you're in fear that fight fright uh, fight flight or freeze and the inertia comes from the freeze and the whole universe responds to you when you start to create momentum when you start to put yourself with great belief out there that something will come for you and the abundance of this brilliant universal world there is enough for all of us and there's enough i know it's really hard to believe that right now but i just want to say to all of the business for us out there don't stop even if you just make a little something speak a little something go to your to your wholesale and walk around there for a little bit as soon as you begin the whole beautiful being that surrounds you that is your higher power your your biggest self starts to move to your benefits and this is the power of um, yeah. the law of attraction 
And I even, you know, for me, I, I did. I went through that sense. I went through the inertia and I realized I had to move. And as soon as I did, just take one tiny step, I was shown which way to go. And also yeah, what true. I can say is I, guys, I have had so many orders in the last, maybe the last 10 days that I have been so surprised the amount of orders I've received from people to deliver for new baby, uh, thank you, sympathy. And I believe with my whole heart that our flowers and people's will to have flowers and flowers for events and flowers for occasions is going to be there regardless because it's that one thing that makes you feel good. And it's a natural element. It's happiness. Yes. It's a kind of happiness. It makes us yeah. happy. It makes us feel good. It, yeah. it feels as alive, you know. I think Correct. this is what what it is. And and we um and, and I mean you know we initiated uh, right at the beginning uh, a petition to say florist uh, should be able to sell flowers because we believe a flower is an essential good not an essential good that you need like to feed your stomach but to feed your soul this is yes. essential for a well-being of a person and yeah. and i think um that that's what um what we should never forget because flowers are helping us to move on to be happy to be creative to and to, just to have something living in your yes. house i mean not everyone to be quite honest not everyone is fortunate to have a big garden or to have big like outdoor space you know i mean there are a lot of people who are in like who live in very confined like areas very small mm. apartments maybe even they look like not they don't have a beautiful view they look against a brick wall whatever it is i mean it's not just i mean lush and lavish um right. and gardens that people over. have you know all over the place so just to have like a beautiful small bunch of flowers brightens your day when you i don't know pass the kitchen table or the exactly. living room or wherever the flowers are placed and you see something that lives and it's not dead and i mean we are surrounded by so much negativity when you switch on the tv you hear about death rates and vaccination and another I don't know so and so pe many people affected and like it's it's really like for me i i don't like to switch on the tv like i really don't um but you are just like everywhere bombarded the internet facebook wh wh whatever it is wherever yeah. you're gonna switch exactly. on is nothing positive right now at least not much so like to have something in your personal space at least that brightens your day and makes you smile is just yeah. invaluable yeah true and uh, tell me a little bit, um, you you have been a big part also, and uh, I really, really, really appreciated that uh, for bringing to life a flower show to Johannesburg. Tell us a little bit about this journey. I mean, we had Mike uh, on the on the show as one of the first, I think he was the second um, person that he's uh, spoken to. And we also got to hear a little bit about his plans for this year. So tell us a bit about the last, like, so like, what was it all about? I, I met you at one day, like after the show, and I could see it was hell of exhausting. Yeah. <laughs> so but then, that, that look, was, guys, the quickest way I could to feel lose, it. The quickest way to lose seven kgs is to do a flower show like that. <laughs> so you know sylvia i tell you that was such an amazing experience for me when mike first met me and he sat across from me and he told me his vision i just said yes i said yes you know from the beginning i believed that that show was going to be brilliant and i believed it was going to happen and i believed that i could do it and i don't know what got into me <laughs> because it was so hard but mike said yeah. look let's let's go big and i said okay or well, how big and he said well how about a thousand square meters um i and then he's i said a thousand no he, he said okay wait hang on a second how about 5,000 square meters? And I went, what? And he said, can you do it? And I said, yes. <laughs> it just came out of my mouth. I said, yes. And uh, <laughs> it was so beautiful for me because it was everything I believe in. 
about how you can give people a platform to come together. First of all, what I loved about it was that I decided that I would bring together everyone, the interflora, um, the Safu ladies, the, the self taught the real um, high end designers that have traveled the world and, you know, trained with the best of the best. And I would put everyone under one roof and I would give everyone a space to create and to be beautiful. And boy, I promise you it was, nine we worked so hard on that show and traveling to cape town and sitting with designers and encouraging them and saying we can do this we are so good this country can be seen and just the response i got and the positivity that came with it we had a huge amount of negativity and uh naysayers that was so hard to get past and to stay keep standing up every morning and going it's okay it's okay let's just keep going keep going um yeah and then of course the I mean, I still had to walk around that pavilion on the day that we went live and say, oh my God, we did this, you know. It was really, really, really difficult, but it was really, really, really beautifully rewarding. And everyone just came and brought their A game, you know. Everybody gave more than we expected. People really showed off, and I'm talking specifically around the, my pavilion and the floral designers, um yeah backbreaking, backbreaking i've never worked so hard in my life but everyone did you know and people that when people walked in sylvia the public into that pavilion and their eyes go like this and the jaw yeah and the oh yeah it was like that was the best thing ever because that was what it was about it was about making everybody as many people as we can see and appreciate how flowers have evolved over the years and what floristry actually can be and what floral design is and the aesthetic and the the ways in which people can express their creativity and yeah you know it was it was brilliant and it was i loved it so much um yeah, it was amazing. One can still hear the passion for it out of like how you voice. how you explain it and how you describe yeah. it. And uh, and I also must say, I mean, I take my hat off that you um, all of you involved. I mean, not just you, but everyone oh, that yeah, has actually right. been part of it um, uh, has uh, pulled this off. And uh, the first thing always is is very difficult the as the hardest because you start completely from the scratch and uh, you don't know where to start and where it ends. And I totally agree with you when you say to the thing, yes, and you have no clue, like we did a couple of things <laughs> exactly. like that in our past. And it is good that you have no clue. I can just tell you because, because otherwise <laughs> you would have not said yes. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> I tell you, I learned a lot. I learned a lot. You are yeah. not. You cannot. You cannot pull out. Yeah, you cannot pull yeah. out. Yeah. But um, I'm. I'm happy that you actually um, uh, stood by and you pulled all this off, and it was beautiful. Uh, honestly, you. saying, and and I'm really looking forward um, to the to the next one. I, I still don't know. Maybe uh, we have spoken to Mike about four weeks ago or something. I can't no, remember. Like three weeks ago, yeah. three weeks ago, and he said he he is quite positive, positive but still not sure because yeah, of it's the so whole situation. We just don't know, you know. I mean, it's so hard. You can't even guess at the moment. It seems difficult mm -hmm. to be able to say. So we wait to see, I guess that's, you know, we just have to go carefully forward. Um, let's see what happens. So if my, my crossing is, fingers, yes, yeah, let's, why don't we do the next big thing for, for South Africa as well as the show, but what about that big flower fight that's on Netflix, having a South African version? Yes. I think we'd beat them. this. I, yes. I, I'm on that. You, you don't know. Actually, I'm on that. Uh, maybe we can speak about this on a on a mm. more private platform. <laughs> because this is, yeah. This is what um, what I'm currently actually doing. Um, but uh, but yeah, I think um that we we should bring Africa more on the map, and I think this is also something. This is every single piece uh, that helps 
to, to let people understand what Africa is. You know, we had yesterday a talk uh, with someone, uh, like a, a, a personal chat with someone that um, that said a lot of people in, in his, like, country, they think Africa is like one country. You know, like, they don't even know that Africa is, like, a lot of different, um, um, like, countries. So I think we should bring up a lot more like what people can expect from us, what people should see in Africa and not only like animals and crime. This is this is one part, but but there is so much more in between. And this is on all of us to let the world know what it is about Africa. And I think a show like this uh, for the future can really, really be a, a beautiful, um, let's say, a mirror of what our industry is capable. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah no, for creativity. Sure. I think that is what is, needs to be shown, like how creative people are. Um, yeah. And Africa is made out, and even South Africa, I mean, out of so many cultures, so many languages so many like spirits you know so that there is so much to offer just alone in south africa but obviously like if you take the continent as large this is like an amazing amazing fundus of creativity that must be shown and and where people yeah. just hopefully are in awe and say wow yeah this is sure. something i've never expected yeah no 100 percent right so i think that's it's got to be done <laughs> as soon as we can. We got to it. <laughs> We're crossing fingers for the show. Thank you. Uh, Thank even you. if it needs to be postponed, it is no problem. There is even more time to create beauty. Exactly. That's uh, my sentiment. Exactly. Postponed is not cancelled. This is the <laughs> exactly. This is the new slogan for the year 2020. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Jill, um, for coming on, for your time and also for your inspiration. I think for a lot of people, it has in a way resonated. And this is what the platform is also like all about, that people find themselves when we speak to people. So thank you so much. And thank we you. wish you... I like, can just say like, one more thing, one more thing to everybody out yeah. there. If you are in the industry and you're feeling the pain of this, never, ever, ever give up. Just don't give up. Don't give up. Just hang in there. Just hang in there. Thank okay? you. Thank you. Yes. Thank, thank you. you very much. Uh, there's well. nothing to add. This is the final word. And thank you very, very much. Thanks for your time. We wish you all the very best. Thank we you. Hope to see you. And I, I can just let you know in a couple of weeks, maybe for one of your uh, next uh, maybe workshops or whatever, we get peonies. I, I I promise you, you get some of the peonies. Yay! Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Keep well and stay safe, Jill. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye.